This is my kitchen. This is a Wheelock RSS. Probably doesn't belong here. And this is a Collector's Controls DUSMC-S. And this is the guy who invented it. And this is every single Wheelock RSS in my collection. Today we're going to figure out how many of these we can synchronize with this. Happy Fire Alarm Friday and welcome to today's video. So, as I mentioned in the opening of the video, today we're going to be trying to synchronize all 16 of my Wheelock RSS's using this Collector's Controls DUSMC-S synchronization module. This is Logan from 405080, the creator of the DUSMC, and we're going to be figuring out just how many of these we can synchronize and whether or not it blows up. So, <laughs> tell me a little bit more about this. Yeah. Um, how did it come about and what's it do exactly? So basically, when I was a younger enthusiast back in the days of like where all the videos are on like 240p, you go on YouTube and like you wait for people to upload. There's a lot less content back then. I always was intrigued by the idea of having a module that can code all of your alarms to be like a control panel would. And back in the day there actually was something that did this, uh, made by New Age Server Alarm if you know him. and. I was like, oh, I want to buy this, but it wasn't readily available. He only made around one or two units, if I had to guess. So my idea was to become what I wish I had and provide an option for people to be able to purchase a device that can accomplish all these tasks. And I also threw in the added benefit of being able to synchronize different brands of fire alarm devices, including two-wire horn strobes. It can do audible silence and all that good stuff. So yeah. It's a pretty exciting piece there that makes it a lot easier for most collectors who don't have advanced panels to be able to synchronize multiple brands of devices. Yeah. You know, like my MS5 is pretty limited in the different sync protocols that it has and not everything works perfectly on it. So this will be a good test today to see if we can synchronize all of these RSS's. So while Logan's over there stripping wire getting ready for the project, I kind of wanted to go over some more about the devices that we'll be using for this video. So, as I mentioned before, I have 16 Wheelock RSS's of some color, shape, size, flavor, form, factor, whatever you want to call it in my collection. And 12 of them are these RSS-2475Ws, which is kind of hard to see in the glare of the studio light here. But these are pretty old. They are fixed 75 Candela wall mount 24 volt RSS's manufactured in the 10th week of 1999. So these are all pretty old, and I know the cover's upside down on all of these, so that way we could get kind of a, a better look for them so they could lean back on their terminals here, otherwise they all lean the wrong way. But there's 12 of them here, 11 of them are in red, and then the 12th here is in white with the clear strobe. Also, some of my viewers may remember this one. It's an RSS 24 MCW, manufactured the 28th week of 2001. Just a basic garden variety multi candela wall mount RSS with a red cover plate. This is one that uh, you saw in my April Fools video from 2021 where I was supposed to be unboxing an exceeder and instead received an RSS. So it'll be joining us for this video. Uh, down here at the bottom I've got kind of some of the more interesting ones. This first one here is an RSSR 24110C. It's an RSS with a red strobe, ceiling mount, fixed 110 candela. This thing is extremely bright and came brand new in box. It was manufactured in the 12th week of 2016, so one of the newer ones here. There's another one of those 2475Ws, just with a white cover. On here, in a little rougher shape, a little bit more yellowed, we have an RSS B-24MCC. So this one is a multi-candela ceiling mount blue strobe. And this one also has the white cover plate, manufactured the 37th week of 2011. So it's looking pretty yellow for its age, but it works and it does the job. And finally, we have this Amber RSSA-24MCC. So this is a 24 volt ceiling mount multi-candela amber strobe and this one was manufactured the 32nd week of 2015. So this is quite a, an assortment of strobes here that we'll be trying to synchronize. 
and we'll see if this collector's controls DUSMC-S version 6 is capable of running them all at once or if something will go wrong and it's not able to synchronize them. I have tested every single one of these devices and they are all functional. Uh, most of them I actually just rescued out of a dumpster in the past couple weeks. So they were on their way out and I was able to save them, test every single one, and we should be good to go. So we'll see how this goes, Logan. We will. We, will. we are stripping little pieces of wire to go in between each strobe. And for those in the comments that I know are probably typing this already, I know this is technically the improper way to strip collar off, but this just happens to be fast and it does not strip down to the copper. And what kind of wire are we using for this? We are using brown FPLR. <laughs> I'm kidding, it's a thermostat wire. Because uh, it's cheap and works perfect for collector use if you guys ever need a wire type to use i highly recommend thermostat wire and the particular type that we're using is 18-2 so it's two conductor 18 gauge wire yes. which for most purposes is fine but you can also get it in like 18-5 which has five conductors and that's what i used to use on the old system that we had in fire on friday for anyone that's curious yeah, and if you've seen my system tests as well in my basement, that all uses thermostat wire. There's a, the expanded section in the pantry is the only part that actually uses FPLR, but all the rest is already behind trim boards and I can't replace it, so it's still thermostat. And quite honestly, it works perfectly fine for this case because the only difference is there's just less fire resistance, so it does not resist flame as long, but So we're getting the control module all wired up right now, so that way we'll be able to have our power supply power everything for us and be ready to see if this works. For the purposes of testing, we'll be using a Simplex 425120 to activate the control module. That way we can control whether or not it's running. If anyone's curious how pole stations are wired, you put your either positive or negative into one end of the switch and then you bring it out the other end so that it's able to break and unbreak the wire internally. And then this third terminal on this series of pull stations specifically is connected to nothing. So we're using it basically as a wire nut to connect the ground out to the strobes once we connect that. So we're gonna do our positive in this terminal and then our other negative in the same terminal as this wire. Basically, it just acts as a short. Make sure it looks good, yeah. Right now we're actually about to put that together here so that way we'll be able to get power from our power supply into the DUSMC. So we'll run the other positive that's going to the input terminals on the DUSMC into terminal number two. So that way these two reds here are controlled by the switch on the pull station. And then our white wire, which is our negative lead in this case, is gonna jump into terminal three which is coming straight off our power supply. So we're basically just bonding the negative right there and using the pull station, as Logan said, as a, a wire nut, since this will just be fewer wires running around and make this a little bit of a cleaner setup. Yes. Okay, so we've got that all wired up. So what we can test now is we will see if our power supply gets power over to the controller. Pull station and our controller here. Pull station might not stand up 100%, but turn on our little 24 volt power supply and bring it all the way up to 24 volts. This one seems to have a super long startup process. I don't know why, but now we are delivering 24 volts to the pull station. So as soon as we pull down, module active turns on. And when we have this set up for coding, which as you can hear, it's set on temporal at the moment we're able to control this and we'll set it to Wheelock Sync and see what happens. Yes, sir. If you're wondering why this module has six terminals instead of four, is the, uh, the extra two are used as a four wire to two wire conversion. So if you had a panel that's doing a four wire output, you could put a two wire horn strobe on the output of this 
And as long as it's set to the correct brand of sync, it will do audible silence. Which is cool. So we'll test this on one strobe first, just to kind of demonstrate wheel lock sync and the capabilities of it on this control module. So what I'll have you do is, you know the codes on these better than I do for the switches. So as you can see, this is just running in straight continuous. Strobe is flashing at 110 candela. Nothing really special, but Logan flips the switches in the right order here. Try to do them both at the same time. That's the wrong one. Not bad. Now you can hear with the click of the relays that we are in perfect wheel lock sync. So in theory, as we start to add more of these strobes to it, we should be able to get a pretty solid sync on all these. So now we just need to go through the task of wiring 16 strobes to this module and see what happens. Yay, wiring. <laughs> So we are back and all 16 strobes are wired. Um, not really sure how this is going to go, but we currently do not have wheel lock sync enabled. We'll uh, let these run for a little bit and show you what 16 strobes looks like unsynchronized and then flip on the DUSMC and watch them get synchronized. Should I hit it? Go for it. Alright, three, two, one. All right, so we proved it that the DUSMC can handle 16 wheel lock RSSs at once, but uh, it seems like we need to synchronize those, so I'll defer to the expert there. Alright, well, I think that about wraps it up for this video. As you can see, we proved that you can synchronize 16 wheel lock RSS strobes with a collector's controls DUSMC-S, and it seems like everything is working flawlessly. I mean, the only issue we have is the power supply gets a little bit warm from all that current draw, but the control module seems to handle just fine. So, it looks like that'll work. Tune in next time for when we find 32 Simplex SmartSync strobes to try out. <laughs> and we watch Logan panic as his DUSMC goes up in flames. No, no. So I want to give a huge shout out to Logan from 405080 for coming over and helping me wire these, as well as producing the beautiful DUSMC-S for us to try this with. And I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to leave it a like. And we'll see you in the next one. See ya. <laughs>